Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FPL Now. Today we're going to be going over some knee-jerk reactions for game week 7. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Leave a comment, how is your game week 6 currently going? Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, before we get into the knee-jerk reactions for game week 7, of course we still have two games left to play today. We've got Brighton taking on Leicester and Arsenal taking on United, so I do still have three players left. But it has not been a good game week for me at all. 38 points, just two points above average. As I say, I do have two players still left to play. Uh, three players, should I say. But again, it's just not a great game week from me. Uh, rank 4,501,000 for my game week rank. I've, to be fair, I've got a red arrow, but it's not been too bad. I started the, the, the week on like 19k and I've gone up to like 24k. So to say that I've only got two points over the average, I've only gone up down like 5,000 places, which isn't that bad. And again, there's obviously still games left to play. And, you know, a dunk bullet header would absolutely save my game week, whether it happens or not. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but at this point in time, it's not been too bad. Um, so obviously... Edison and Cancelo getting me two points each. Really, really unfortunate to concede a goal to Villa. Villa had like an XG of literally nothing. Like, it, it's just one of those. Apart from the Newcastle game, City have actually been so, so solid at the back. And they haven't really deserved to concede in any of those games. I'm not just saying that because they have double City defence. But the, the numbers just don't lie. Like, they've been actually really, really unlucky. And so obviously that lost me another eight points in clean sheets there so that would have took me up to 46 which would have been a very very nice game week um because that would have shot me up to like at least one million in game week rank but um it, it was really unfortunate uh trent get me one point coming off on the 58th minute i'm not too annoyed about that because pretty much everyone owns him but at the same time like come on Klopp, like think about those fpl teams out there uh trippier getting me eight which was huge for me i was honestly there was like 40 odd shots in that game against crystal palace no goals went in. I think actually, I think there was an own goal, but it was like VAR'd out. Um, but yeah, Trippier getting me obviously the clean sheet and then two bonus created so many chances in that game. I think he created six chances, five of them offset pieces. And of course, I took Kukurea out for Trippier this week. And if I didn't do that, I think I would have been on 31 points. I think Kukurea got one point this week, which would have just been horrible. Um, so I'm really, really happy that I did take out Kukurea for Trippier this week. Of course, I also took out Gabriel for Dunk. Still waiting to see if that was a good transfer, but so far. My two transfers this week have been really, really good. James getting one point as well. Could have been zero um, because of that late VAR decision. I mean, I won't go into it, but VAR definitely is to um, sort itself out because I think we can all mostly agree um, that that probably should have stood. Um, but that's the back line at this point in time. But I've literally only had like two returns this week, which has been obviously abysmal. Um, Salah with three points. I think he hit the post from a Luis Diaz assist, which was really, really unfortunate. I don't know if that would have hurt my game week or made it better because obviously a lot of people captain Salah. I guess the extra three points with Diaz. And then I don't know, may maybe it would have actually uh, helped me. But either way, Salah just not really been performing like he's uh, usually has in previous seasons. So obviously coming out with three, Diaz coming out with three, still got Martinelli to play, still got Jesus to play as well. Um, Haaland captain as well. Um, I was um and ahhing about Salah and Haaland, but when Pep came out with his comments saying that, um, you know, he's 22, he recovers quickly. If it was 32, it'd be a different story. And also he's going to break all the records. Um, I was like, okay, Pep, please don't be playing these mind games with me. I'm going to give him the armband. And uh, yeah, did score a goal, got max bonus as well. Nice 18 points. He's got like 10 and 6 now. Um, could have had another goal as well if Kyle Walker decided to square it. Um, but unfortunately, he didn't. So, but that was really, really nice because a lot of people did captain Salah. So, to get those extra points over the Salah captain was quite uh, good as well. I think that might be a reason why my, my game week rank isn't as bad as it could be. Um, and of course, Trippier definitely saved me this week as well. Um, so yeah, that's what my, I'm currently on on game week six. 38 points, three left to play. I need a dunk bullet header. I need Martinelli to score as well because he is only 50% owned. So that would actually help my rank. Jesus, I'm not too bothered about because he's like 80% owned. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but either way, we'll see what happens uh, with the games today. Uh, going into the knee-jerk reactions for game week seven though. And top of the list, Trippier. I was saying this uh, in my team selection video. Like I think he's just such a good option going forward. He's got West Ham, then Bournemouth, Fulham, Brentford. Like, this is just two, three really, really nice fixtures. Um, and he's on set pieces. He's creating so many chances. When they keep a clean sheet, he's just usually going to be on bonus because, he's like I say, he's taking all the set pieces. He's creating so many chances. And, you know, if he does score from a free kick or something, you're living in dreamland. So, um, yeah, I, I honestly think Trippier is the best option for that Newcastle defense. I actually think I had Trippier and Pope on my wildcard um, draft this week that I obviously made the video for earlier. And, 
I generally think that that wild card draft actually did really, really well this week because it also had Tony in it as well, who of course scored the hat trick, um, had Pope in it who picked up three bonus, had Trippier who picked up two bonus. Um, so if you captain Haaland and use that wild card draft, you'd be sitting on like 60 odd points right now. Um, but either way, Tony, another player that a lot of people are bringing in. I don't know why people took him out. Um, he did blank twice, but you know he has lead, he had leads at home and he loves playing against leads at home, um, and it was always going to bang. So I'm not, I mean, I'm surprised that he got a hat trick, but I'm not surprised that he like scored and stuff. But again, I still think Tony is a solid option. The thing is the forwards this year are all really, really good options. You've got Haaland banging, you've got Kane banging, um, you've got uh, Jesus who's playing well, you've got Tony, Mitrovic, um, the new Newcastle striker as well. He looks really sharp. Um, so yeah, you've got so many good forward options this uh, this year. And again, Tony is up there with them all. Uh, Mitrovic as well, because they're both on penalties. I think I like Tony a little bit more because of the fixtures. I think Mitrovic still has Chelsea to play. Uh, but then after that, they've got like some really, really nice fixtures. So honestly, between those two, I mean, you could, if you really wanted to go for it, you could downgrade from Jesus, go for Tony, and then also bring Mitrovic and not have Jesus. But I think that might be a little bit risky. But Honestly, Tony and, and Mitrovic are really nice options. And again, you can see the fixtures coming up. Southampton away. Arsenal at home will be a tough one. But then after that, they've got Bournemouth. Newcastle will be a tough one. Brighton will also be quite tough as well because their numbers have been really good this season. Chelsea will also be tough. Well, maybe anyway. Chelsea seemed really, really bad at the back. And then they've got Villa, Wolves and then Forest before this horrible uh, City, Tottenham, West Ham and Liverpool um, streak they've got going on. So definitely, for me, he, he should be like on everybody's watch list if you are trying to bring in a striker. But again, Mitrovic, who's a little bit cheaper, also a really nice option, just potentially not this week because they've obviously got Chelsea away. And then Gross as well, another player that a lot of people are bringing in. Um, I don't, I mean, he hasn't even played this week yet. I, never, never bring in a player before they've played because they could always get injured, stuff like that. Um, but everybody bringing him in. Uh, Leicester at home obviously is a nice fixture. Then they've got Bournemouth and then Crystal Palace. So I understand why people are bringing him in. But, you know, bring him in after the game. You know, you don't know if he's going to get injured. Or not. We, we know what happened. We all saw what happened to Rodrigo. A lot of people brought him in. Um, and obviously he got injured. So that can happen. So don't bring him in before he's actually played. Because, again, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but he does have some really nice fixtures coming up. And then as well as that, Martinelli, another player that's just ticking along. I mean, Arsenal's fixtures do get a little bit not great after the Brentford game Tottenham Liverpool leads then City so obviously not incredible there but you know Liverpool haven't been too good this season City again have been really unlucky to concede the goals that they conceded Tottenham have been good this season yeah, I don't know like it is I think Martinelli's definitely a hold I think he's one of the best players to have at that price point um, but you know he's probably not going to be getting you too many points over the next like um, few games after Everton and Brentford and then Pope as well I think a lot of people are just downgrading to him from Edison maybe Ramsdale as well um, a really nice option. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with double Newcastle defence um, at all, especially for Bournemouth, Fulham, Brentford. Um, so if you are like wild carding soon, maybe if you and you do have Edison or Ramsdale, maybe bringing in Nick Pope for, for one of those two isn't too bad. Um, and again, new, double Newcastle defence, it could work. It worked yesterday. I know there was 40-odd shots in that game, but it can happen. Uh, and then finishing things off, the most transferred out players this week. We're starting off with Rodrigo. No surprise there. He's out for like three, four game weeks, something like that. And which is really unfortunate because that's all their like really good fixtures. They've got Forest, United, Villa, and then Crystal Palace. And then it goes to Arsenal, uh, Leicester, Fulham, Liverpool. I mean, obviously Fulham and Bournemouth are nice, but it's just crowded between, you know, Liverpool, Tottenham, City. I don't know why Leicester away is ranked as four. Leicester have been so bad this season, but either way, um, that's the situation there. But completely understand why everyone's getting rid of him. You know, he's, he's, he's just not going to be playing. So he's just going to be losing your team value. Uh, Salah as well. I mean, you know, the no Salah teams could be kind of creeping up a bit. I mean, I've never seen him perform like like this. It's crazy. Like, he just doesn't seem like the same player. You know, Liverpool do have a lot of tough fixtures coming up. Chelsea, Arsenal, City. You know, Brighton's not going to be a tough game either. Wolves are pretty solid at the back. Um... So yeah, Liverpool players, I think we'll, we will be seeing them kind of shooting down the ranks quite a bit. You know, there are people that are going to be bringing in like Sterling and stuff like that for Salah. And I don't think that's a terrible move. Aubameyang as well um, could easily happen. But yeah, 128,000 people taking Salah out, probably going to have a price drop as well. And then Trent as well. I mean, I don't I don't know this is the best idea to take Trent out, but it was. It's, he only got took off early because of the Champions League game midweek. Um, but it was really annoying getting him. If he stayed for the clean sheet, he would have been kept. Like, he wouldn't be getting taken out. And that's not his fault. That's Klopp's fault. So, I don't think you should be getting rid of Trent. We know what his numbers are like. Yeah, Liverpool don't seem the same this season. But I think that's a bit knee-jerky to get rid of Trent. But for Salah, I kind of understand. Um, because he's 13 mil and he's just not really doing anything. 
Um, Perisic as well, another player that got um, benched this week. I think he came on for a cameo. But yeah, City, Leicester, Arsenal. A couple of tough fixtures coming up. The last game's quite nice, but obviously we've got Champions League and stuff in uh, European games. So that's why a lot of players are going to be getting benched and rested and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's the same with Kane, really. Like, is Kane a player you want to keep? Um, with this kind of like fixture run coming up potentially, but it will be tough. And then finishing things off, Mendy as well. Um, shoulder injury, 75% chance of playing. I didn't actually uh, watch the Chelsea game, so I don't really know how bad that injury was. Obviously, I just saw the goals. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Probably people are getting rid of him for Pope, fair play. Uh, as soon as you see a, a player flag, then it's, you know, the, the, you go straight away against them. But they do have nice fixtures coming up. I mean, this is why people are going to be targeting Sterling and Aubameyang, though, because they've just got such nice fixtures coming up. Um, and yeah, definitely something that could potentially happen. Anyway, though, that's going to be everything from me. Um, if, you di if you did enjoy the video, please do drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 50 likes today. Thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers as well. You guys' support on the latest videos have been ridiculous. I hope you're enjoying them. I hope they're helping out. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with a wild card draft. We'll do team selection Tuesday, transfers and stuff Wednesday. Uh, final thoughts preview Thursday, Friday, or whatever. But yeah, hope that you end your game week six with a bang. Hopefully, your remaining players do something today. I know a few people have Jesus captain uh, completely going against everything. So yeah, hopefully he does bang for you guys today. But yeah, thank you for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. And until next time, peace.